Hi, hello again and welcome to Tool of the Day. Uh, but only this time we're not coming to you from Marty Fennell's garage, we're actually out in my backyard. And this here you're looking at is a cracked orchard patio that over the last couple of years we've been having the same issue. Uh, the joints between them were filled with this compactable sand. You buy it in the tub, you put it in, it's supposed to get hard. It's not supposed to let the weeds grow up. Uh, over the years, what happens is, is this area doesn't get a lot of sun. So then it gets a little mildew. And every time we power wash it, all the sand comes out of the joints. And then I got to start over again. So what we decided to do this year is we decided to fill in the joints with mortar. So that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you the tools you could possibly use. I'm going to show you how to mix it in the tub, and then I'm going to show you how to put it in and clean it off. This process is very similar to like grouting tile. You can't just throw it in, you got to put it in and you have to wash the stones off later. Otherwise the mortar will stick to the surface and discolor it and then that'll be a huge problem. Okay, right, so start with, we have a couple of trowels here. That's a pointed trowel. That's typically used for uh, laying a block or brick. Uh, this is a little, a little square tip trowel. Uh, this would be considered a flat trowel. And all of these that you see, they come in different sizes, and different configurations, but they're pretty much the same. Uh, and this is a uh, round nose trowel. And this one would be, again, it's, this one's called a slick. This one would be for putting the joint between brick for the most part and cleaning it up after you lay the brick. Okay, so I'm going to show you mostly what I'm going to use today. They're probably this one, the pointed trowel, and maybe the flat trowel. But I just brought these up to show you so that we know what we're talking about, that there's uh, trowels come in many different sizes and shapes and many different configurations. So, again, yesterday I sat out here with my trusty screwdriver and I pulled all the sand and junk out of the cracks. And uh, today what we're going to do is mix up some mortar and then uh, I'll show you how to put it in. So what we're going to use to put in between the joints of the of the stones is we're going to use a mortar mix. This is a type S and what it is it's made from sacrete and this is all pre-mixed from you for you rather uh, being again that this is a course for homeowners uh, it's not necessary that you buy the Portland cement in a bag and a big ton of sand uh, that you have to mix the uh, proportions correctly. This one's all mixed for you instead. This one happens to be an 80 pound bag uh, I don't know why I have these. I'm an old guy. I like the 60 pound bags, but I think the mortar mix only comes in the 80s. So that's what we got. So it's all pre-mixed for you. On the back of the can, I'm sorry, on the back of the bag, you can see all the directions are here. It tells you to mix the whole, if you're gonna mix the whole bag, mix it with 5.3 quarts. It has to be above 40 degrees. And again, all the information's here for you in order to mix this bag to the proper consistency so you don't ruin it or don't make it too thin. What we're gonna do, is we are gonna mix it very dry because we're gonna to try to keep the a lot of the moisture off of the stone so we don't have a lot of cleanup to do afterwards. So what I'm gonna do, and most of you will know this, huh? with the utility knife, I'm gonna rip an X in the bag, dump the contents into the uh, wheelbarrow, and then start mixing. Always make sure you do this outside, and always make sure you have safety glasses on. You don't want to get any of this stuff in your eyes. What I'm going to use to mix it is just a very simple garden hoe. Okay. We're going to add water and then we're going to keep mixing it until we have a rather nice thick consistency. What I've done, but mortar's in the wheelbarrow. I've made myself a little trough in here so that I can put the water in. And then again, if you're, if you're new to this, I've mixed many, many bags over the years. So I'm just going to mix it until I feel it's where it is. But if you have not done it before, read the directions and put in the proper amount and mix the whole bag so you're not going to have it uh, become a weak mix. Too much water makes a weak mix. Again, that's why we're making it stiffer so it's a stronger mix. Okay, so now I'm going to add the water. Water starts, water starts the hydration process. Once the hydration start process starts, that's a chemical reaction between the cement and the sand and everything in, in the tub. There is no stopping it. Okay, it's gonna continue. Uh, the mortar itself is going to get stiff within a, couple of, within a couple of hours, but it does take 28 days for the mortar to cure completely. So as you can see, I'm way short of the amount of water I need, so I'm just gonna to add some. Very important at this point that I don't add too much, because then again, the mix becomes too wet, and then I have to either get more, or I have to use it wet, or let it sit for a while. None of which are good scenarios. I'm just going to take my time, um, add a little bit of water at a time, which makes it more difficult to mix. Uh, but in time, I'll have the consistency I'm looking for.
All right, so uh, what we're gonna do now is this: the stones have been baking in the sun all day. These are now in the shade, but it really doesn't matter. As the sun came over, the sun was beating on here, and what that did was it led to all the edges of the stone drying out. So what's gonna happen if you put the mortar in is the stones are gonna absorb some of the moisture from the mortar and then weaken the mix. So what we're gonna do is take some kind of spray bottle or some way to just gently moisten the sides of the stones. You don't want a lot of water in there, but you just want enough to make it moist so that when you put the mortar in, uh, it doesn't the stones don't absorb the mortar or suck the mortar out, the water out of the mortar. Easy for me to say. Okay, so we're gonna start with the bigger trowel. And this one's a little different as I'm gonna set this stone in mortar and try to get it so it's even. So I'm gonna put a nice little bed in there to start with. And then I'm gonna place my stone in, get it where I want it. I have a little flat edge so I can kind of make sure it's even with the rest of them. And then I'm gonna leave that one for now and come back to it and go on to the other ones. And you guys, there is no rocket science to this. You just put it in and tamp it into the joints going to take a little while to do this and you just keep moving around pushing it coercing it controlling it and getting it down in there so you have two things you have it in there nice and tight so there's no air gaps and then you have it nice and even so when we take the sponge to it later we get a nice clean edge to it okay it's not again not rocket science just make sure you don't work past where you put the moisture in or where you put the water in. And then uh, we'll, I'll go on and do some more of this. And then I'll come back to you and show you how to sponge it off so it looks nicer. Okay, again, it's not, put it in, a little bit of water, push it in, and then we'll clean it off later with the, uh, with the sponge so it looks nicer. Okay, so we don't have any fuss with clean all the mortar off the top of the stones. Right, we have a lot of mortar to do. I have a lot of joints to do. It is going to take me a while. The tighter ones are a little bit more difficult to do because you have to make sure you work the mortar down in there real good. And again, make sure you pack it in there so there's no air gaps. And you just continue along until you get them all done. Too much on there. You don't want to leave too much on top of stone so that you have less to clean off later, which is another idea of the drier mix. So you don't leave a lot of mortar on top of the stones. Okay, I've wet over here, so I'll go ahead and continue over this way. probably going to be a little bit of a lengthy process but at the end hopefully the outcome is that next time I power wash this that I don't end up blowing all the sand out of the joints and then uh, we just clean it up and move on so I don't have to keep doing this every two years okay so a little bit of labor on this end will save me the hassle of replacing the sand between the joints every year So there's a little bit of it done. You can see the joints, they're mortared in. Uh, I'll continue when I get to a certain point before this dries out too much, I'll take the sponge to it and then I'll, I'll show you that process also. All right, so what I got is a sponge. It's made for tile grout, but this is basically the same thing. We put the mortar in and then we're going to wash it off because now as you can see, uh, it's all over the top of the surface of the stone here and starting to dry out of here a little bit, but it's still wet. Uh, so I got a bucket of clean water. The bucket's not completely full, but it's, it's full enough for this. And what will happen is I'll try to keep the sponge relatively dry and I'll just come over the edge, trying not to drag too much of the mortar out of the joint and just kind of clean it off. And then what I'll have to do, because it won't be a one-time thing, is now, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can see that. As you can see, there, very clean, distinct edge of the stone, which is what we're looking for. And I'll continue to do this. Then I'll clean the stone off so that the mortar is just down inside the stone and very little of it is on top. And if it is on top of the stone, 
it is so diluted that um, I'll be able to come back tomorrow and scrub it off again and get all the mortar off the top so that we end up with a nice clean contrast between stone. This is actually a cracked orchard and then the joints that we're looking for. So that's our desired outlook right there. And what that's gonna take is, you know, quite a bit of water because the bucket's gonna fill up. I don't know if you can see that. It's already filling up with debris that I'm pulling off the stones. That'll get saturated. And then that, at some point, uh, it'll become back out here. So I'll just keep filling up clean buckets of water and then I'll go over all the stone. And this is why it's somewhat important that you can't, you don't wait too long here but the longer you can wait the the drier the mix is and then it cleans up easier and again that's also the beauty of having a dry mix to begin with is that it's not real wet where you're slopping it all over the place when you're putting it in and it's it's making a mess so again this is the, the desired outcome we're looking at there's still a little bit here but i hesitate to work it too much because then i start drawing the mortar out of the joint and i don't want to do that so i'm going to leave it go for now i'll move on and do the rest of it and then this I'll either come back later on tonight after it gets a little drier and scrub it again, or I'll wait until tomorrow first thing in the morning and scrub it off at that point. All right, so that's it. What I'll do is I'll give you a little clip at the end to show you what it looks like when it's done. Uh, but for now, that'll be basically it. And it's basically about the trowels, the mortar, mixing. Um, hopefully I've given you enough information that if you want to tackle something like this, you'll have the, the you know, the, the, the knowledge and to go ahead and do it yourself. Okay, so again, as always, stay strong, stay away, and this will go away. Thank you very much. God bless. All right, so the patio was done. Uh, we had a little bit of issue with weather this week. I started this on Monday, Monday or Tuesday, I've forgotten. It's now Sunday. Uh, there was threat of uh, freeze. So if there's any threat of freeze, you do not want to be working with the mortar because if the mortar freezes at all, it could crack and come right out. So you want to make sure your weather's good, which is why I waited until yesterday. All right, but it's all done. The mortar's in. I sponged it all off. The edges look really good. It looks nice and flat. I wet down the stones because the color of the stone comes out better when it's wet, rather than trying to show you this when it's dry so you can get a better idea um, of the completed job. Uh, this is called Cracked Orchard, uh, the type of stone it's in there. It's about two inches thick, uh, extremely heavy. This one lays in a bed of sand. Uh, so in reality, what may or may not happen, I don't know yet is if this should, uh, some freeze, thaw, and, and heaving should occur, the mortar might come out anyway. Because remember, that was the, the whole reason for putting the mortar in, because every time I power wash it, the sand comes out, I gotta put more sand in every year. So the product is done. It's a finished product here at the Fennel House. Uh, chalk another one off the list for uh, home projects I've been doing on the Corona lockdown. All right, so when you're working with any kind of mortar or any kind of cement-based product, you should always take the necessary safety precautions at the very bare minimums. Uh, the cement, which is the, the product that holds the, all the aggregate together, uh, that is very corrosive. So at the very bare minimums, you want to make sure you have a pair of gloves on because the corrosiveness of the mortar will, will eat your skin away. Not eat your skin away, but it could have effect on some kind of rash on your hands. But you want to wear a ventilator so you don't breathe in the fine powders when you're mixing it and you want to have a pair of safety glasses on okay now these are rated by the ANSI 87 which is the american national standards institute and these are probably the uh, least least effective ones they're still safety glasses there are much better ones you can buy but these will these will offer you some kind of protection on your eyes and don't ever work mortar without safety glasses on uh, nothing worse than getting sand in your eye but getting that corrosive mortar in your eye could really be very uh, dangerous for you. So always have safety, always take this safety precautions when you're working with border.